You know the biggest thing I like about flipping, I think the reason I like to do it, I love to set the hook. Like that's the whole deal for me. It's that I love to lean. <laughs> Well, I can still catch one anyway. So that is probably my favorite flipping bait. I know everybody thinks it's a jig, but I, I honestly think there's a part of my mind that would say, if I could only have one flipping bait, turn, like I'm gonna fish tournaments for the rest of my life and I can only have one, and you gotta pick one, it'd be that one. I catch them year round on it. I've caught more 10 pounders, weighed in more 10 pounders in tournaments on that bait than any other one. I just have the utmost confidence in it. I, I don't know if it's the, well look, if you don't believe me, look at the floor of my boat from yesterday. Now, if you'll notice the color change, that I was fishing a blackwater lake yesterday. The black and blue looked good and I never saw any crawfish. On the lake that we're on today, I caught a fish earlier on a, uh, on a frog that spit up a crawfish that that double header rodent is exactly watermelon red on one side, green pumpkin on the other. And that's exactly, we're gonna eat some crawfish tonight, that's exactly how they're gonna look before we put them in that boiling water. Well, you know, we're right, right at the end of the spawn, if you know what I mean. You can still probably find one on the bed. Well, I actually have seen one on the bed this morning, a male, uh, saw a fish or two garden fry, but it's definitely, you know, I feel like the majority of the females are done. There's still some males lingering around. And um, you know a big deal on a lake, a natural lake, where you have heavy cover like this, that's typically I find where those bigger females go, you know, after the spawn, because they're looking for a place to rest, you know, a place that they can go in and just sit till they get, you know, back to normal and then they'll migrate around and move to wherever they're going. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny how that happens everywhere. It's always a little different. So we're on a natural lake in the south with a lot of vegetation. It could be Okeechobee, it could be Seminole. I mean, just anywhere that has heavy vegetation, when those fish are recuperating from the spawn, it seems like they migrate to that stuff. But if we were on Kentucky Lake, it's that deal when the fish get through spawn in there, they go the deepest that they go all year. That'll be when they go out and get in 30 feet of water, you know? So it's kind of the same, you know, it's that same mindset. Those fish are going somewhere different where they won't get bothered off the beaten path. and. Um, I find the first place to look typically is you can take a big spawning flat where you know fish is spawn and then go to the heaviest cover that you can find in that area. And that's typically where those females will show up at. Because, you know, as a tournament minded angler, that's the fish we want to catch anyway because that's the bigger fish, you know. So we're going to go fish for wherever the biggest ones are. And uh, that's typically what happens. So this lake is high, you know, the water's high. So that's making that even more of a deal because it's putting so much water into a lot of heavy cover. And uh, which makes it a little more difficult because we're having to fish a little more of it and figure out what heavy cover they're in. And then when you have a lot like that, a lot of times it can be depth or bottom. You know, it could be the deepest heavy cover or it could just be where, you know, the bottom's hard. You know, something different, some rock on the bottom, some sand, something that, uh, because a lot of times on these older lakes where you have a lot of vegetation, you know, you have a lot of soft bottom. Years of that vegetation dying and falling to the bottom will have a tendency to silt areas. And so those fish a lot of times will migrate to where it's, you know, where the bottom's harder at. But regardless of where you are post-spawn, typically fish bunch up. Like this is not a time of the year. Now, if I'm, I, when, I, when I say that, this is, if I wanted to, you know, if I'm gonna fish around spawning areas, you might catch scattered fish that are left lingering. But we're looking for a place that those post-spawn fish are bunched up. And that this is the time of the year that that happens, you know. They'll go to the best cover with the best feed where they have to do the least amount of work. This is the beginning of post-spawn. We're not two or three weeks into it. Like we're just like, it's just happened. I just think big slow moving lures are better now than faster ones. Now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, once that water temperature creeps on up, that fish has been post-spawn for a week or so to get over some of the rigors of it. Then all of a sudden, you know, faster baits will seem to play. 
And another thing can trigger that if you're on a lake that has a lot of bait fish. Now this lake is, you know, these are bluegill and crawfish eaters. That's dom the dominant forage. But if we were on a place right now that, you know, the shad were spawning, of course that would be the deal. They'll be on a place where the shad are spawning because they're gonna be somewhere where it's easy. They don't wanna chase, they want it to be easy right now. Thank you. Very big, but he's bigger than I thought. I was feeling on him and he wouldn't, uh... I mean, these are fun sizes because I like to jerk, but we need to some heads. He's still looking for some heads. Well, you know, I, I, I've had a couple bites doing this this morning and each one of them has bit on the initial, the initial fall. So I'm, I'm not fishing super slow right now. And uh, I do when I get a bite. Once I get a bite, then I slow down and take everything apart. But right now we're still in the hunt mode. I'm still trying to figure out exactly, you know, what these fish are doing and where they're located at. So I'm kind of keeping it on the, uh, you know, keeping my trolling motor moving and until we find the right deal. And then I'll become a lot slower. You know, not necessarily fishing the bait slower, but just a lot more thorough in that, you know, my flips are a lot closer together. And you know, you, you'll have that a lot fishing like this because that fish doesn't have to go anywhere to get that bait. You know, I'm putting the bait to the fish. And then I think, you know, the other deal is when you're dealing with water clarity that's clean as this, you can flip faster, if that makes sense. You know, if I feel like I got the right weight, the right rate of fall, I don't have to spend as much time. I need to be thorough. I just don't need to spend a lot of time working the bait. You know, if I put it in there and hop it a couple times and, and pull it out. You know, that varies with times of the year as far as how the rate of I fish my bait, how much time I spend working it. But typically cleaner water like this, I don't spend a lot of time because again, I'm not trying to draw that fish from a long distance. I'm gonna put the bait where I think the fish is sitting. So when I hop it a couple times, I expect him to be there. <clears throat> That's what you like when one of them staggers you. Huh? That's what we've been flipping for all morning right there. It's getting a little better. And you know, that fish doesn't look like uh, she spawned out. And she's got, I don't know if you can see down in there, one big old crawfish tentacle sticking out of her, uh, sticking out of her throat. Well, you know, there's, there's so many advancements in our tackle. You know, uh, everything we're using now is more sensitive. You know, fluorocarbon is so much more sensitive than monofilament. Uh, uh, tungsten weight is so much more sensitive than, you know, a lead weight. And then we're using a high stretch line. Our rods are made of the best material they've ever been made of in history. And so all those things together, we, uh, it's, it's, and I'm a pretty keyed up person and I have a pretty good feel for what's going on. And it's, I, it's almost made me react too quick. And the tackle we're using, you cannot jump on these fish anymore. So I grew up using monofilament that stretched like a, um, a slinky. And so to get the hook in, golly, you used a rod that was a freaking broomstick and you jumped on them as hard as you could, you know, to get the hook in. Uh, you know, if you leaned on one with monofilament, you'd never stick it. Well, now that if that's all changed was because our equipment's so better. And I have to be really careful because again, I like to get keyed up that when one slacks that line, I'll have a tendency to just react. Cannot do that with these low stretch lines now. Um, and I don't care if I'm using fluorocarbon really or uh, braid. I mean, it, you're better off to be tight lined on that fish and just pull. You know, now you pull, I'm pulling hard, you know what I mean, but, but you don't, it's like any slack in the line will cause you to miss that fish and it won't matter if it's little or big because you're that hard tungsten weight and you react quick, it's just blowing that fish's mouth open. Um, so it is, I've had to go back since our equipment's gotten so good and kind of reteach myself into, uh, you know, how I set the hook. And I've always been one of those guys, I mean, I have slack line for years and you cannot do that, you know. I could probably 
downgrade my tackle maybe and get by with it you know go to a seven foot rod instead of a 7-11 or you know go to smaller tackle maybe and do that but i don't want to do that <laughs> i enjoy using the big tackle because i'm able to you know pull those fish out there and handle them and swing them and it, it's just more efficient and you know big tackle handles big weights better when you have to flip a uh, you know an oversized weight so but again i if i'm missing fish more times than not, it's not the fish's fault, it's mine. It's something that I'm doing, you know, on the hook set that's causing, uh, it's causing me to miss those fish. Basically how I pick my setup, this is my 7-Eleven signature flipping stick. And, you know, I also have a 7-6. And typically how I decide which one I'm gonna use is how I'm fishing the bait. If I'm pitching to cover and spending a lot of time actually fishing the bait back, I'll use the 7-6 because it's a good bit lighter action, a lighter tip. But anytime I'm pitching to targets and fishing straight up and down, I'm just a lot more efficient with that 7-Eleven and this heavy cover than I would be that 7-6. Uh, and it, if I'm old school flipping like this down a line of you know solid reed or, or pitching, and I can just handle those fish so much quicker. You know, because I'll be honest with you, I'm not big on fighting a fish. When that fish bites me, I wanna get the hook set and get that fish in here because that's where the money's made. <laughs> it's not made until that fish hits the floor. So I'm not big on giving that fish a chance. So I like to use tackle that, you know, that I can handle them with and get them out. And, uh, and I think you catch a lot more fish that way. You know, the, the least amount of time that fish spends over in that stuff, the better chance I got of getting him out, you know, or getting him in the boat without him coming off. But, but that's typically how I pick if I'm gonna use my 7-Eleven or my 7-6 is that are you, are you fishing the bait back or are you just target fishing? If I'm just target fishing over in holes and mats, straight up and down, you know, like we're doing now, I always use this rod. It's just more efficient. Handles line better. Another deal is that happens a lot up close fishing like this is getting slack, you know, and it's just a lot harder for that fish, you know, to get slack with that longer rod because I pick up so much more line. You know, just by picking it up, you, it's almost like you pick up a couple more feet just by adding six inches of rod. And the other deal is too, is using a rod that works for the tackle. So, you know, I do a lot of, I, a, a good bit of big weight fishing. I mean, right now I'm pitching a three, you know, I'm pitching a three quarter, which is a decent size weight. But I find that if you, you know, you use too small a rod, it will wear you out fishing with those bigger weights. So if I'm going to punch, like even if I'm gonna punch with a ounce and a half or bigger, I actually go to a 7-Eleven Super Duty Lose, which is a giant rod. And I only use that rod for an ounce and a half to a two ounce weight. But the, uh, the thing about it is that big rod, when you pick it up by itself, you're like, wow, it's a big rod. But when you put that two ounce weight on the other end of it, it works as a counterbalance. And it makes that fishing easier, you know? Biggest mistake a guy can make is to go out there with a, uh, hmm, I think that was a bite, is to go out there with a big rod, or a little rod actually, and put a big weight on it, cause, and try to learn a new technique, because you'll, you'll burn out pretty quick. Cause you don't wanna, the deal is, you don't want to feel like that weight's heavy on the end of the rod. And by using that bigger rod, it just makes it, Easy, everything balances out. You might pick that rod up by itself and say it's heavy. Once you put that big weight on the other end of it, then it's not heavy anymore. 